Ginger, Gina, Anna. Oh, it's good to see everybody. So folks are still going to be coming in, but we're um, going to go ahead and get started um, and, and try to keep this for under an hour if possible. Um, I wanted to, uh, Aaron's going to, Aaron's on spotlight for some reason, but that's okay. Uh, I wanted to um, just take a couple minutes at the top before I introduce Aaron and first and foremost, wish everybody a happy recovery month. Uh, at the top of recovery month, today is uh, September 3rd. Uh, this is our month. It's our pride month. Um, and really excited to see a lot of the things that everybody's doing for recovery month. And I know that a lot of you have been kind of displaying uh, your different recovery stories and calls to action on social media. Just keep doing that. This is uh, our month. Be sure if you're using Twitter to use those Twitter hashtags um, that have been set up specifically for us uh, for recovery. Um, I uh, wanted to say thanks to everybody who, who came together for Mobilize Recovery. We're going to have some uh, kind of outcomes reports and case studies coming out of that uh, within the next couple of weeks and just kind of a recap on Mobilize. Uh, I was really um, hesitant, as I said, during Mobilize at the beginning on, on doing it all on digital, but I think it turned out wonderful. And I think the community and the connection and, uh, you know, uh, the proximity that we felt and authenticity uh, really came through. It was, it was really fascinating. And we are working on and alvin said did i say pride month i did say pride month as all of you know i am gay but i also believe that recovery month is like our recovery pride month i feel like just like pride you know is celebrated um i feel that you know september is basically our recovery pride month because it is about showing our pride uh in recovery for those of you that are members of the official uh, mobilized class uh, we actually are are already uh, in in um, the planning phases for our in-person uh, leadership development weekend, which will be in Las Vegas. Uh, we are targeting that uh, tentatively, given uh, if everything moves along slowly uh, and 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 the way that it's supposed to, and we hope it will uh, with the uh, uh, reopening down here in Nevada that we'll be looking at sometime probably in April for that. So. More information uh, will be coming uh, on that in the coming months, um, but we have begun the planning for it. You know, this uh, training and 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 the portal uh, and the recovery vote campaign that you're going to get kind of a, a preview of um, is super important because I can't think of any other better way to display uh, our recovery pride than actually uh, showing up as people in recovery and showing the power of the recovery vote. Um, and I am really excited about it. And the team, uh, Aaron and Sean and Garrett and the whole team at RAP has worked really hard uh, on kind of getting this to where it's at today. We're in the midst of a, of a pretty consequential, consequential uh, election. You know, I feel that recovery, access to recovery support services, treatment, harm reduction, prevention, all the things that we care about uh, are on the ballot. Uh, a lot of the issues of the day right now, uh, whether it be COVID, whether it be social unrest, whether it be healthcare, uh, a lot of these issues do have um, uh, parallel effects uh, on people who are seeking help uh, from addiction and mental health uh, issues. You know, I, 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 I will repeat myself, um, things aren't getting any better. They are, uh, to the contrary, uh, I believe, and I think the data is pointing to getting worse. So it is important that now that it is election season, uh, that we understand what a recovery voter looks like. We understand how we can engage our communities uh, around registering to vote, showing up at the polls, asking the hard questions of candidates, uh, and making sure that they don't just see us as, you know, quote unquote, addicts and alcoholics or family members that support, quote unquote, families and alcohol, fam uh, family, uh, people, families who support um, uh, quote unquote, addicts and alcoholics, uh, but people who actually uh, support recovery and who are willing um, to take uh, this cause uh, to election day uh, and vote on the issues that are most important to us. So thank you all for showing up um, this evening. Uh, really excited 
uh, about the next couple of months and the work that we have going on with RAP, and I'm going to pass it over to Aaron. All right. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Um, I want to echo a little bit of what Ryan uh, conveyed. Um, it's good to see everyone. Welcome to you all. Um, I know that uh, for a lot of you, it's your first time um, here uh, on, on our monthly state lead training. Um, so if it is your first time, welcome. Uh, if you've been a state lead for the past year, uh, thank you. And uh, it's good to see you all. And um, the vote recovery campaign is something that we've been working on for a couple months now. Um, I'm excited to uh, get some of these tools out there and to have this conversation. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and, and share my screen. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's Aaron Kacharski and I'm a person in long-term recovery since September 6th of 2003. And um, for 13 of those years, I've been doing organizing work. Um, and, and the first thing that I actually um, got involved in on the national level was a civic engagement campaign that was registering people in recovery to vote, stopping presidential candidates and asking them questions about recovery um, and doing get out the vote work with the recovery community. Um, and so my activism in terms of combining recovery with civic engagement, um, when I found that um, 13 years ago, it was really the beginning of my um, advocacy journey. And so the vote recovery campaign to me is, um, is gonna be one of the more exciting things that we've gotten to work on. Um, and we've only been, the Recovery Advocacy Project has only been here for about a year. Um, and so some of the things that we're gonna be talking about um, just in terms of where we're gonna be going with the vote recovery um, presentation today um, is what is vote recovery? What does that actually mean? Um, components of vote recovery. We're going to hold a mock election tonight um, with three amazing candidates um, that I, I honestly don't know who I'm going to vote for yet. I'm going to listen to their speeches, um, but we're going to have some uh, we're going to have some state leads um, work to gain your vote tonight, and we're going to practice uh, voting. Um, and then we're going to be talking about the vote recovery website, which we've been working on for a while. So we're glad to give you all the first peek of that um, and what that looks like. Um, and so when we walk, when we walk right into what is vote recovery, it's a civic engagement campaign. Um, for those of you who haven't kind of heard that language before, civic engagement or civic part participation is an individual or group activity addressing issues of public concern. Citizens acting along together to protect public values or make a change or difference in their community. And that's the piece right there, that piece that's bolded is why Recovery Advocacy Project exists, um, is to work in, on the community level. Um, all the other sort of political sort of stuff I've done in the past was kind of that national sort of stuff. Um, and it doesn't always translate to what's happening around me, right? And so the vote recovery campaign is going to be an opportunity for all of us to really figure out the issues that we care about as individuals, uh, the issues that we care about as communities. And it is a way that, you know, we can open the door to have these conversations with people that are running for office or people that are already in office. And so we've been talking a lot in our trainings over the past year about relational organizing and the importance of building relationships. And I think 100% that the vote recovery campaign is like this conversation starter that, um, that we're handing over to people. Um, so that way you can start engaging with people, um, your, your family, your friends, members of your community, and talking to them about recovery, because we don't always know how to start that conversation. And vote recovery is a way to do that. 
Um, so it, it actually speaks exactly to what Recovery Advocacy Project is about. I know a lot of people are new on this call, um, and so you've kind of had a little bit of an introduction about Recovery Advocacy Project, but mostly you kind of got exposed to the, um, the Mobilized Recovery convening last month, um, and then just kind of heard about Recovery Advocacy Project. So um, I wanted to make sure we put this slide up here um, and take a look at the, the second and third sentences there the recovery of the grassroots organizing to think and act locally. So Vote Recovery is a thinking and acting locally campaign working to build a visible and effective constituency in demand of community and public policy-based solutions. And so Vote Recovery fits exactly what we're doing um, in regards to the Recovery Advocacy Project of keeping it on a local level. Because for me, I know that the relationships that I can make in my community, it's easier to have dialogue with people that are running for office locally than it is to have dialogue with somebody who's running for president or, or United States Senate. Um, and so if we can think about that sort of piece and think about how we first have to figure out what issues are important to us and demand that people that are running for office take stances on those issues. That, you know, have people earn our vote as an individual and as a community. And so um, when we think about what vote recovery is, um, recovery is the candidate. Recovery is the conversation starter. And this all started when we had a town hall meeting in, I think it was May or June um, in Pennsylvania and our Pennsylvania state leads had a, had a town hall meeting and they asked the question, somebody in the audience of the town hall asked the question, how close are we to recovery being a single voter issue? And that kind of sparked this conversation and this thought process of, you know, is recovery an issue that's strong enough to bring people to the polls? And so that's really what this conversation and this campaign is about. Um, outside of Nevada, we're not endorsing um, any political candidates for office, recovery is the candidate nationwide. And I hope that that piece sort of makes sense. Um, it's issue-based, not political party or candidate-based. And this piece is really important. And, and, and so if you were to just take away, you know, the Democrat, Republican, Independent, Green Party, whatever, if you took a, a, away the political party system, who would you know to vote for? And it would be the candidate that spoke to your issues, right? Like it'd be the candidate that, um, that had a stance on the issues that you cared about. And I'm a big fan of the West Wing. Um, it's clearly been off the air for, the, for a while, but there's a scene in West Wing um, where Rob Lowe's character, he's a candidate, he's a, um, he's a campaign manager for a candidate. He's telling the story about how he's a campaign manager for his candidate. And the candidate had like an 80 something approval rating. You know, he was way up in the polls and he was gonna win his reelection. And he was going against this guy that was probably only gonna get like 5%, maybe 10% of the vote. Basically the candidate that his candidate was going against was getting whooped. And so Rob Lowe's character asked the candidate that was, you know, really low in the polls, what are you doing? Like, what is the point of running if you know that you're gonna lose, if you know that you're gonna get whooped? And, and his response was, nobody gets to run in my district without speaking to my issues. And I think that if all of us took that piece as a voter, you know, so he was talking about as a candidate, um, like as somebody that knew that he was going to lose, but wanted to make sure his issues were represented. If we took that to heart as voters, think about that mentality. You know, nobody earns my vote until you speak to my issues. If I, if I, you know, recovery is so important to me that people have to earn my vote. One of the things I got, one of the, um, I got, a flyer on my doorknob the other day um, from a candidate running for office. And 
the first thing I did was look to see if there's any information on the flyer around addiction. There wasn't. And so I looked up the website um, to see if there's anything around addiction. And there was some stuff on there and, and, and stuff that it would at least, you know, have me consider voting for that candidate. Um, but I contacted them. Um, it was very, it was just on opiates. Like it wasn't on any like alcoholism or mental health or criminal justice or anything like that. And, and to me, I wanted the candidate to, to share a little bit more. And so I've reached out to them, asked them to address some of those things on their website. Um, and so that to me is the, at the crutch of this vote recovery campaign is all of us kind of taking that mentality of we're an important constituency. We're a constituency of consequence. Um, when we organize and show our strength, that visible strength that we're talking about in the mission statement, that's something that should be chased down by people running for office, not ignored. And that's something that's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but in some states, it's like you can community organize to show that strength. And that's what vote recovery is about. Um, so it's empowering the recovery voter, um, that sense of community organizing, assessing recovery as a single voter issue. And so the answer to what is vote recovery of us to explore the answer question and make sure people that are trying to get our votes know what those issues are and know how important it is to you. And so a lot of this is about finding your voice, speaking up and inspiring others to do the same. Um, so to move on through about the, the single vo issue voter assessment, um, this, was a, this was done in likely voters um, according to a recent poll, this was in um, uh, Nevada, um, almost 1,200 registered voters were asked um, if they would consider a candidate of a different party if they had an attractive stance on recovery. And so these are, these are voters. They're most likely to go to the polls. They don't necessarily have a connection to recovery. Um, and a plural, plurality of the voters, 42%, said yes. And so we know that recovery is not necessarily a party line issue for people. And so when I say single voter issue, um, I should explain that a little bit more. You know, single voter issues are things like, uh, like gun control or environmental or uh, reproductive rights um, the, or the environment. These are issues that get people out to the polls because they care so much about those issues. Um, and so 42% said yes, 34% were unsure but they, they didn't say no, which is good. Um, and 23% had answered no. And so we actually asked the same question of people in the recovery community. So this is people in recovery. Um, and we asked them, would you support a political candidate of a party you're not affiliated with if they prioritize solutions to your state's addiction and mental health crisis? And 78% of us, um, said yes, um, it, it'd be more, I'd be much more supportive, or I'd be somewhat more supportive. 16% of us were unsure, um, and about 5 to 6% said no, it wouldn't have an impact on my support. They would stick with their, with their political party. And so um, I'm going to come back to this point in a little bit. Um, but just to break down, um, the components of vote recovery are very, very simple. Um, there's four components to it. The first is voter uh, is recovery voter education. Um, I'm going to get into that in the next couple slides. The second is candidate engagement, and um, I'm going to get to that. Re vote recovery town halls is something that we're doing all throughout the end of September and into October. Um, we're going to have a way for you to sign up for that if you're interested in organizing that. Um, and then we're going to talk about get out the recovery vote. Um, and Anna Maria um, is our get out the vote strategist and specialist in the state of Nevada, and she's doing some amazing work. Um, so we're going to have her um, um, chat for a little bit um, on the get out the vote strat strategies um, that we all can take part of. And so, so here's the thing. 
And so we asked the recovery community if they would consider switching over, right? Um, if a candidate had a better recovery platform and 78, remember 78% of them said yes. Um, but here's the other piece to that in the same poll, and this is part of recovery voter education. So this is knowledge of candidate stances. Um, of the candidates that you're likely to support this year, do you know your candidates' positions on addiction and mental health recovery? And 52% of us <laughs> said no. And so a lot of the vote recovery piece, like when, when I say it starts with us, on one hand, we say, you know, almost 80% of us say, you know, we would consider going over party lines to vote for a candidate of recovery. But in the same breath, we, half of us say, we don't know what those stances are. And so um, we have some work to do um, in terms of doing some research on local candidates. Um, I know a lot of, I, I used to like get stuff in the mail from candidates and like automatically throw it away. And I stopped that practice because I was like, wait a second, you know, like I, I collect all that now. It's like in a pile. Um, and, and I reserve time every time before election day to go through that um, and to go through websites. And you can literally, you can take an hour. It doesn't take that long to really, um, um, to figure out who's running in your community and their stances on the issues, if they even have one. And um, Sean is gonna go through the vote recovery website in a little bit and um, walk people through that process of, you know, I don't know who's running, but um, you and find all that out through the vote recovery website that Sean's going to be showing you in a little bit. Um, so over half of us said, no, we don't know where the candidates stand on recovery. 26% um, said, yes, I know it for some of the candidates. So that's pretty good. Um, and 23% said, yes, I know it for all the candidates. And so that, that piece right there is pretty awesome. Um, and so there's that piece of recovery voter education and that, that starts with ourselves and other um, recovery voters. And so recovery voter education starts with registering to vote. Um, you, you have to register to vote in order to vote on election day, unless you live for some reason in the state of North Dakota. I don't know why, but there's no voter registration in North Dakota. All you have to do is just prove that you live there. Um, and so if you, but for everybody else <laughs> outside of North Dakota, you have to register to vote. Um, to vote on election day or to early vote or to do absentee voting. Um, and so voter educate and this and a lot of this is going to be covered on the vote recovery website um, that Sean's going to walk you through a little bit later. Um, the answer the how, how do I vote? Where do I vote? When do I vote? If we can direct everybody in the recovery community to a, to a website that answers those questions and increase the voter turn it up, turnout of people in recovery and just make it easier for people to vote, we have done our job. Um, and so another piece of voter education is not just registering to vote, familiarizing ourselves with voter eligibility laws. Every single state has different voter eligibility laws. Um, so I can't say this is who's eligible to vote because that would take forever. Um, you have to go through and, and research your own voter eligibility laws um, and there's a way to do that on the vote recovery website. Um, so you can go, um, there's only, there's only two states in the country, uh, you know, for some, for some states, you're not allowed to vote unless you're like, like if you have a criminal record, or if you're like off parole, or if you're still on probation, you might not be able to vote. If you're, if you're currently incarcerated, you can't vote. Um, that all varies in every single, uh, in every single state. And that affects our community. And so it's important for us to know what those voter eligibility laws are. Um, Maine and Vermont are the only two states in the country that allow people that are currently incarcerated to cast their vote um, from uh, while they're incarcerated. And so there's work to be done um, around voter eligibility laws as well. Um, explore what issues are important to you. We talked about that, that's, that's for you. Um, asking candidates questions um, and being persistent is always pretty fun. Um, if they don't answer by email, all right, well, who's your campaign manager? I'll reach out to them. All right, well, they didn't get to you. All right, I'm gonna bring a group of people to their office. And, and, and so it's all right to be persistent, you know? Um, and we wanna simplify the voting process, make it as easy to vote as possible, prepare your vote to the best of your ability, 
That includes, um, we're going to have ways for people can, that can get sample. There's websites where you can get sample ballots before you go to the polls. Do you know exactly what's going to be on the ballot before you walk into the voting booth? Um, you want to know where you're voting, you know, your polling location. You can't just like go anywhere. Um, and so uh, having all of that information before you go vote, um, we want to be able to, to provide that on the vote recovery website. Um, we're going to do a quick survey here. Um, we want to find out how many people on the call are on in the training right now are registered to vote. So you're going to see something pop up on your screen. Um, just take a second um, and answer the survey. Are you registered to vote? Uh, yes, no, not sure if you're registered or not sure if you're eligible. Um, just take a second and fill that out. Uh, we have a couple more votes coming in. See, you guys are voting. <laughs> uh, all right, and so we have, let's do another 20 seconds here. And then Garrett's going to share the um, share the results here. So let's take a look. All right. Um, so that's good. Um, so 92% of the people that are currently in the training are registered to vote. That's, that's good news. That's awesome. It's a good start. 6% um, uh, not registered to vote. Um, we had 0% that weren't really sure. Um, and then some that weren't sure. Uh, if they're eligible. Okay, um, so that's a good start. Um, let's go with um, why do you think people don't register to vote? What do you, let's use the chat box right now and they open up hey, the chat Aaron, box. Can I, can I yep. read a question from the chat to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's an interesting question that I personally didn't know about, but um, somebody mentioned something of a crossover law where if they're registered, um, for one party, they can't vote for another. It's against the law and you can go to jail. And a few people were. I, I think that, that it, I, I'm pretty sure that's relevant for primaries in some states. I, I'm not totally positive that that is, applies to the general election, but I, I would make sure that that's part of people's research because we we're mentioning that state you know, state sort of laws um, might, vary, might vary in, ter in terms of uh, voting laws. And so that's up to everybody um, to kind of do that. Um, let's look at some of the, oh, so cross-party voting is a state matter, um, says Tom Jackson, thank you. Yeah, and so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it applies to the primaries. Because like if I'm registered as a Republican, I can't go vote in the Democratic primary that year unless I switch my party. Uh, in my in your voter registration, and you can do that if you change if you change addresses. Uh, like my my girlfriend's moving today, and so she's changing her address on her voter registration like immediately. Um, so that way, on election day, she can go vote at the at the correct polling station. There's no uh, there's no pieces to that. So you can change your party affiliation. You can change your address on voter registration. Um, all right, and so we asked, why do you think people don't register? There's distrust in government, yep. Um, not knowing enough about, uh, about candidates, yep. Thinking their voice, their vote doesn't matter. Not able to get to the polls. Not able to get to the polls, right? Think their voice doesn't count. COVID-19, felony, yep. Um, criminal record. Think their vote doesn't count, right? And so those are all not knowing where to register. Not knowing where to register, right? And so um, you guys got them all. If you kind of look at um, the next slide here, um, this is the, the the family feud of why people don't vote. Um, and, and I want people to look at the, this top sort of piece. Um, voter education is key to turnout. 49.6 of eligible voters did not vote in the 2016 election. That, it, that like baffles my mind. That's 232 million people in the country um, that decided to sit out for one reason or another. Um, so if, 
So, so that's half the country are electing the people that are in office. Um, so if you look on that left side, why people don't vote, you guys got the main ones there. I think that first one, I think their voice doesn't matter, right? And so vote recovery has solutions to all of these why people don't vote, right? And so we're going to go from one side to the other. If you think your, vo your voice doesn't matter, right? So a solution to that is community organizing. Um, is we, we have a voter pledge that people can take where they can register other people to vote. And so maybe you think that your vote doesn't matter, but if you organize, you know, 20 to 50 people in recovery um, and you all vote, went out and voted, um, that, that's community organizing. And one of the first, um, I used to be part of this environmental group called Clean Water Action. We were like those kids knocking on people's doors and doing organizing and fundraising. And um, we, we, we would endorse political candidates. And there was this, and there was this, um, this is like the perfect story to, to why people's votes matter to me. Um, is there was this candidate, his name was Angus McGilkin, which is like enough reason to like vote for him right there. Um, it was an amazing name. And he was running on a state Senate race and he was running against this guy named Scott Brown. And Angus McGilkin had an amazing record on the environment, and Scott Brown did not. And so uh, the group that I was working for endorsed Angus McGilkin. And we knocked on doors for him. We talked about to voters about environmental issues. And um, we said, by the way, you know, your local Senate race, um, we've endorsed Angus McGilkin. And so, and, and we did a huge get out the vote for him. And um, Angus McGilkin lost that race and so there was you know a crew of like 20 of us that would go out almost every night and knock on doors we knocked on hundreds and hundreds of doors and we turned out a ton of votes um and angus, angus mcgilkin lost that race by like less than 100 votes like in, throughout the whole district and so like, like since that happened like i've thought about that process of like what if we canvassed three more days on on you know two more days on the weekend or had two or three more shifts, like, could we have made that difference? Um, and the other piece to that is that um, the guy that actually won that race, his name was Scott Brown, uh, he was terrible uh, on the environment, but he later became a United States Senator. And like, I think about that all the time where it's like, what if he would have lost that race by like 100 votes instead of winning it by 100 votes? He probably would have never been a United States Senator. And so like, I think about that piece of like, why people's voice matters when we talk about mobilizing around the issues that that inspire us and so um community organizing is definitely a solution to thinking your voice doesn't matter and so that don't know how where or when that's another um reason you guys put up of why people don't vote and so our answer to that is simplifying the registration process and the website that sean's going to show you is going to go into that and then uh, voter suppression voter eligibility um, disenfranchisement of voters, like we're encouraging to vote, but on the same level, there are groups and people that are, their interest is to not get people to vote. And that is based on race, is based on where people live, is based on age. Um, there are tactics that keep people from the polls. And so to combat that, um, you know, we, we want to make it easy for people to vote, um, but to know your rights. And there's there and and so if you are turned away at the polls on election day, we want to make sure that people have tools um, for that. And there's plenty of, there's plenty of groups that work on that sort of stuff. But we have some of that on the vote recovery website. You're going to check out. Um, and then candidates ignore issues. Candidates aren't speaking to the issues that you care about. Well, engage them. Talk to them about it. Um, there was a guy that was um, voting, he was running for state Senate in Pennsylvania when I lived out in Pennsylvania. And um, I met him at a coffee shop. He said he was um, running for office. And I, so I immediately asked him about addiction issues and recovery issues. And he has some good stuff to say. He's like, I was like, is any of that stuff like on your website or flyers? He's like, no. And I was like, hey, listen, I'll volunteer for your campaign. I will literally write a statement and a platform on addiction recovery. And, and if you approve it and you, and you want it, you put, you go ahead and put it on the website and he did it. And, and so, and, and I, and, and it wasn't, you know, it, it's just like, it was just a conversation. Like that's all this is, 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 is engaging candidates and, and making sure that they care about the issues that we care about. Um, you can volunteer and, 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 and do that for candidates. 
They might not have a platform. They might not understand the issue that you care about. So it's up to us to make sure that they understand. Um, your recovery voice is more than just casting a vote um, at a polling station. Um, registering to vote, registering others. We're going to have voter voter pledges that we that we have um, that Sean's going to show you. Signing a petition. We're going to have vote recovery yard signs um, that you can order and talk about a conversation starter. Um, we want that in your yard. We want people to ask what is vote recovery. Um, letters to elected officials, protesting, rallying, volunteering in your community, September recovery month events, making progress on voter eligibility education on constituency on the issues. These are all ways you can have your voice heard. Um, one of the vote, vote recovery town halls we had in West Virginia, that came up. People talked about voting, but then they talked about all the other ways that they can get their voice heard, um, including um, uh, uh, petitions and signing letters to elected officials and yard signs. Um, I put endorsed state recovery platforms on there. Some of you might not be uh, aware of what that is. Um, we have states that have ha held community listening sessions and listen to people in recovery and put together platforms for the state um, and individuals. Um, they've created actions and action network where people endorse these platforms. Individuals can endorse them, candidates can endorse them, organizations can endorse them. Um, and so that I just wanted to put two examples up here. This is Nevada and uh, in South Carolina. Um, and they, they put those platforms together by listening to people. Um, candidate engagement is focused on local races. Um, ask yourselves if candidates have platforms and websites on addiction-related addiction related issues. Um, some nonprofits do candidate questionnaires on, um, on addiction and mental health, criminal justice. Um, do some research in your state to see if, if some of those organizations exist. Um, communicate with campaign staff in addition to the candidates. Um, candidates endorse that state platform I was just talking about and ask questions at town halls and campaign stops. You know, there's like block parties and, and town hall events um, all throughout October. If it's safe and you can socially distance in a responsible way, uh, go to them and, and you can look up candidate schedules and then just go as long as they're open to the public. <laughs> all right, uh, just go. And then um, you heard me talk about vote recovery town halls. Um, there's gonna be a Google form that we're gonna put in. If you're interested in um, uh, helping the, to organize a vote recovery event in your, in your state, we have one coming up in Michigan. We have one in Pennsylvania. We did one in West Virginia. We have stuff in South Carolina and Texas and Indiana coming up um, where people are just asking good questions. You know, what does it mean to be, a rec uh, what does it mean to vote recovery? What issues do you care about as a recovery voter? And so the conversations are um, focused around people in recovery that are registered to vote and what's getting them out to the polls. If you want some assistance in organizing a virtual town hall meeting, um, you can go to recoveryvoices.com. We have an advocacy guide. You just click on how to organize a virtual town hall meeting. Um, and if you want to check out the town hall meetings that we've already done on vote recovery, um, you can go to the YouTube, um, uh, the, the Recovery Advocacy Project YouTube. Um, you go in the playlist and you, and you just click on Vote Recovery. You can check out the ones um, that we have uploaded there. Um, so that way you can see what we're talking about. Um, and it's really simple conversations. Some of them have candidates, um, some don't. Some of them are focused on the voters and that, that's fine. Um, and that's gonna be through the end of September um, and into October. If you want to um, join your state organizing teams and do a vote recovery town hall, just fill out the Google form that Garrett just put out there and, um, and we'll get you hooked up with your state team. All right, Garrett, you were off of mute. Did you wanna mention anything? Uh, no, somebody just mentioned it says needs permission. It's showing it's okay on my end, but I'm gonna double check it and it'll be in It'll be up okay. at the end of this. And I just want to say, um, once you're able to fill it out, if everyone's experienced that, I'll fix it right now. Okay, it's something, I'll fix it. But uh, once you do that, we're going to find out who from which states are, are, um, are wanting to host these. And then Aaron and I will connect with everyone and, and set up uh, calls and planning sessions to do that with you.
and, yep. uh, and two seconds I'll repost it and it'll work. Okay, cool. And we'll probably put it in the follow-up email for this as well, um, if you miss it on here. Um, so we are going to uh, hold a little election here um, just to practice our civic engagement. Um, and we have three candidates that are going to fight for your votes tonight. And, um, you know, they probably just win bragging rights against one another. Um, but, um, or maybe we'll send some, some cool stand up for recovery, um, stuff to the, to the winner tonight. Um, but we have three great candidates. Um, I honestly don't know who I want to vote for, but, um, uh, the first candidate is Johnny Fab. He's from the state of Pennsylvania. The, uh, what is that? The Keystone? Yeah. The Keystone state. Um, Johnny Fab from from Pennsylvania. Uh, everybody's these three cats are gonna have two minutes to get your vote, and so uh, Johnny, why don't you? We'll take you off a mute, and um, we'll get going. So we have Johnny. Yep, we're on now. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Johnny Fab, and we, the Recovery Party, are asking for your vote today. Uh, this vote is not for a party of Carol or for a party of Joanne, but a party, not a party of John, but a, but a vote for the Recovery Party. If nothing about us without us is to have meaning, then recovery needs to get to the polls. Now, some would say that recovery is a single issue party. You know, I say that one in two households are impacted by substance use conditions mm -hmm. and the time to implement common sense healthcare solutions rather than failed drug war policies is now. If you give this party, not a person, the honor of your vote, day one in office, the party will order the immediate reclassification of all drugs. Two, we will remove all criminal records related to substance use disorder by appointing a committee made up entirely of those in recovery to view these on a case-by-case -case basis. Three, by executive order, treatment of substance use conditions will be a minimum of 90 days, a minimum per the party, no exceptions, no exceptions at all, and a minimum of one year of peer recovery wraparound services for each person impacted. Now, there are 25 million Americans suffering from substance use disorder, and locking them up is not the solution. It is time for policies in this nation to reflect that of an illness rather than a crime. Now, for years, we've, been, we've told these individuals to just say no. But what happens when they don't say no? I'll tell you what happens. We say no to jobs, we say no to housing, we say no to freedom, and we say no to treatment of their illness. This stops now. Implement a special committee in each state made up of those in recovery as they are the experts to inform us where our funds will be placed in their communities. Finally, we will listen to science rather than political opinions when it comes to all medical and environmental issues. So we may build a better nation for our children, your children, American children. I humbly ask you, no, the recovery party humbly ask you for your vote today. So we can build this nation, not better, but build a recovered nation, our nation. God bless and thank you. All right. Thank you, Johnny Fab. This is going to be hard. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, Carol Cruz from the Constitution State of Connecticut. Carol, you have two minutes. You're off mute, Carol. What's up? What's <laughs> yeah. up? I am channeling my Angela Davis, greatest activist, 
and political educator, leader among small parties. And I am so in agreement and I'm gonna ditto Mr. Johnny Fab. I'm not here to get you to just vote for me. I want you to vote for all of us. We are here fighting for the same cause. I wanna let you know, you folks know that your voice counts. If you are to vote for me, I'm not looking for a title. I'm looking to collaborate, communicate, and make a connection. We need to be continually making connections so that we can resolve all of these issues, the pandemic, the epidemic, all of these issues, people being incarcerated, people being beat down by the police. We need to work together and stop listening to those other voices. So I want you to take a pledge with me today. Repeat after me. I know you are all on mute, so repeat after me. I no longer are going to accept the things I cannot change, but I am going to change the things I cannot accept. Take your right hand and your right fist and your left fist, Wakanda forever. Peace, my love, gay babies. <laughs> I love it. All right, thank you, Carol. And uh, last but not least is Joanna Vance from uh, West Virginia. The, I think it's the Mountain State. <laughs> the Mountain State of West Virginia. All right, Joanna, two minutes. Um. I love Johnny Fab and Carol Cruz. Um, well, all right, two minutes. Um, I'm not just a person in recovery. I am also a person who grew up in a life of substance use disorder. And I lost my dad to overdose on Thanksgiving Day when I was 15. And um, that was a time when there was no Narcan. There was you couldn't even speak the word overdose out loud. And I was alone, I was ashamed, and I had no voice. And I shared that with the Harvard team. And they asked me, they were like, well, Joanna, where does your strength come from? Where does your empowerment and your bravery come from growing up in a lifestyle like that? And it took me back to um, some very deep memories of going walking into my dad's funeral and there were flowers and blankets and stuff all over the place that people had sent in and i walked up to them and it was from my school and from the community and then a month later at christmas break i got called to the office and they handed me an envelope and it was it had like 250 dollars in it and they were like, Merry Christmas, Joanne, and we love you. You know, at a time when I was alone, I was not alone. And now, today, when people ask me, where does your strength from come from? And where does your power come from? And where, why do you like community organizing so much? Because, because I draw my strength from my community. Okay, when you hurt, I hurt. When you're in pain, I'm in pain. When you are celebrating, I am celebrating. I I'm so happy to be a part of this community, okay? Like this community right here, empowered people, empower people. And my recovery, my recovery party draws its strength from the community right here. All right, well, let, thank you to every candidate. That was awesome. Um, we're gonna put up the poll and so, just to be clear, we're not electing people that like an actual thing right now. <laughs> this is, uh, um, and so uh, let's just, uh, so thank you, everybody. Uh, so cast your vote, cast your ballot is hard. Um, I don't think I can even vote because I'm like a moderator or a host. So um, you guys have fun voting. It is close though, <laughs> I'm watching this come in. Um, so which candidate earned your vote tonight? We have a couple more votes coming in. It's so close. 
it's squeaker. <laughs> All right, a couple more votes. Um, Aaron, oh man, I, yeah. I wait till the one minute mark. Uh, I think there's 56 out of 64 voting. So you got, no, let's say you got another 15 seconds to vote. So close. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's share the results, Garrett. All right. It is Joanna Vance at 40%, Johnny Fab 36%, and Carol Cruz 24%. You all are great. That was a squeaker. <laughs> well done, everybody. Um, I, I, I knew it. I was when I was talking to them on the phone and asking them to to run. I was like, you guys can use props. You can tug at heartstrings. You can kiss babies. You can uh, be funny. You can do whatever you want. And so um, thanks to the three of you um, for, uh, for helping people practice their civic engagement tonight. Um, I, I vote for all of you. There was no tiebreaker. Um, all right. Uh, so real quick, I'm going to repost yeah. the link. Oh, thank you. The, the link for the, uh, the Google form for if you want to get involved in a town hall meeting, there might be plans already happening. There's one in Maryland, there's one in Texas. Uh, and so um, we want to figure out where there's interest and we'll, and we'll, and we'll help you out. Yes, and also um, somebody had asked about how do I know if my state has leads or not? And um, yes. we, you will actually be contacted by your regional lead, Aaron or myself in the next week. Um, and we will be connecting everybody with one another throughout the month of September. So I just want to address that also. So it's, it's uh, connected by email or phone. Um, different regional leads are doing it differently. Um, but the idea is to um, really figure out like where those core, where those core teams are and just make sure that we can um, focus on, you know, if we get three people tonight that are like, yeah, I'm in, you know, uh, yeah, I'm in Iowa, and I want to do vote recovery. Then good, we're going to do some vote recovery uh, town hall in Iowa. All right, um, and so I'm going to turn things over to Anna Maria, who is just an amazing organizer. Um, she's going to talk about get out the recovery vote. Um, Anna Maria. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for having me in this meeting today. And today we're just going to talk a little bit about how we can each individually use our own voices to, to get out the recovery vote this November. So the, the most important thing, can I go to the next slide, please? The most important thing to remember is that we are very effective at, at organizing the community that we already have around us. So organizing our own networks. And this way, we have a really big opportunity to really turn out the recovery vote. So these are just some uh, few strategies of how you yourself can get start getting out the recovery vote right now. Uh, so one example that Joanna just proved to us very, very well is to uh, tie the, your message to the election and make it very personal and urgent. Um, she talked about community and she talked about how we are voting as a community. We're trying to be very visible uh, so that people know that recovery is an urgent pressing matter and we're voting for it right now. Um, we can also check if all of us in our network are registered, your friends, your family members, your colleagues, your coworkers, the people that you see during your extracurricular activities, you can just go on our voter recovery website very quickly and you can check for them if they're registered. You can organize carpools to the polls. Um, you can help people by baking concrete plans on how they're going to vote. Uh, so this is something that's very important is by making the actual plan with them. Like, are you voting on a Tuesday or are you voting on a Wednesday? Are you voting before dinner or after breakfast? Um, just very concrete plans so that people have that uh, motivation to actually take action. Uh, this is something that I used to do before in college and uh, even though none of my college friends were very uh, into being civic participants, voting and dining or brunching and voting always turned out really well uh, because the, the reward per se for 
actually casting a ballot was to go out and have a fun meal with friends. Um, you, for example, if you like to organize, you can create competitions with uh, your friends to see who can get more people to turn out the vote. Something that's also huge is that you can present yourself to your network as somebody that can provide you with or can provide your peers with election help. So if somebody, for example, I saw that somebody put in the video that one of the reasons why people may not vote is because they're not aware or don't know enough information about the issues to go and to feel comfortable to go and cast a ballot on those issues. So if you present yourself as a person that is very uh, knowledgeable about the process of voting, those people will come to you and you can then turn those out uh, in the polls in the, uh, for election day. You can participate in, uh, in coordinated get out the vote efforts through different organizations. Um, so through the chat, I would like to, to put it out to all of you, what other ways do you have to turn out the recovery vote using the, the resources that you have at this moment, meaning uh, your telephone, your email, your social media? What can you do to make sure that all of the people in your network are casting a vote for recovery? So please go ahead and put your uh, suggestions in the text uh, chat box while we go to the next slide, please. So one of the biggest things that we can do is to join coordinated get out the vote strategies. So for example, uh, at Recovery Advocacy Project in Nevada, we are doing, we are endorsing candidates and we are campaigning for those candidates so that, so we're knocking on doors for them. We are making phone calls for them. We are teaching people about that candidate and their platform because we know that those candidates are recovery oriented candidates. So you can participate with your state's party, uh, regardless of which political party that you belong to, you can participate with your state's party so that you can help get those candidates that you believe in elected. You can participate by, let's say, for example, that you are a Democrat, but the Republican candidate in the race is the one that is recovery oriented. So you can go to that candidate's website and you can volunteer directly for that candidate. Um, coordinated events are, are very good because they help us not just reach the people in our networks, but they also help us reach our community in general. So it is a very effective way to communicate with a very large number of people that we usually wouldn't have access to. Um, so participating in coordinated get out the vote strategies is very big. Um, and I'm reading through some of the through long. some of the strategies. But yes, virtual voting house parties, that's very, very good. Tagging, all great. Organizing virtual events with your friends, that's, those are all awesome. So it's all about using our voice and making sure that we are very persistent uh, to the point of maybe, yes, a little bit harassing all of those around us to make sure that we are voting. Next slide, please. So, uh, for example, one of the things that we are doing in Nevada right now is uh, we're using Action Network to track our electoral work and to recruit new people to our organization. Um, so we are, for example, this weekend in Nevada, we're doing three voter registration drives. Uh, we're doing a phone bank and it's all with the purpose of spreading our message throughout the state and registering new recovery voters that are going to be single issue voters that are voting specifically for recovery. And we want this to be very visible and we want it to be very loud so that uh, legislators cannot ignore us or turn their back and they have, they're forced to listen, right? Because our group is so visible and so large and so cohesive that they have no other option to, but to participate with us. Um, so one of the things that we're doing, for example, is that we're having phone banks and our goal is to have 25 volunteers per phone bank, uh, which is, which is hard, right? Uh, but we definitely have a high goal so that we can get more and more people involved. And next. And one of the things that's very effective is to have 
a conversation that's already planned out in order to to have successful conversations. So we do have scripts where we can help you uh, regardless of what is your purpose. So for example, over here we have a text script where we are inviting uh, everyone in our contacts list on our phone to vote for recovery with us. Um, and you are doing so by letting them know I'm going to vote on Tuesday, September 9th and uh, will you vote with me? Here is where you should go and vote and learn about why you're voting for recovery at this website. Uh, but we also have uh, more scripts that are scripts for the phone, scripts if you want to encourage people to recruit more people into your organization. We have all types of scripts. So if you would like to receive a sample script from us, uh, my email address is right on the bottom over here. So please send me an email and I will send you a, a script bank. And now I will go ahead and pass it over on to Sean or Aaron to continue our presentation. All right. Thank you so much, Jennifer. That is, uh, there's a lot going on <laughs> in Nevada. Uh, that organizing an effort like that is, is impressive and, and awesome. And I hope those volunteer shifts are, are, are moving this weekend. All right. Um, we're going to pass it to Sean, who's going to show you the vote recovery website. Um, and so if you, and you know, take the weekend to really explore um, uh, explore the website. Uh, Sean. Hi, everybody. Um, I am going to be showing us the brand new vote recovery website. So let me just switch over here. And then just for the sake of not slowing down my computer, I am going to turn off my video just for this section. Um, as I show this, so one moment. Okay, so everything that Aaron, Garrett, and Anna Maria have been talking about, we have centralized into a single place, um, which is the Vote Recovery website. You can find this website at recoveryvoicesvote.org, or if you go to our normal website address, recoveryvoices.com slash vote. On this website, we've centralized everything. Some of those barriers that Everyone was submitting barriers to getting people to the polls, getting people registered, educating folks on these issues. Everything is in a centralized place. So let's go ahead and just start walking through this. On the main hub, um, we have a few different steps that will guide you through where to start right away. These will automatically link to other sections of the website that will walk you through these steps in more detail. Um, if you're simply just looking for voter tools right off the bat, and want to cut to the chase, you can easily just use this, this uh, voter tool uh, button right here. And this is going to open a variety of tools, like just registering to vote online, checking your voter registration status, submitting a request for an absentee and early voting, election office directory tool. You can find and locate your polling place, look at different registration deadlines for your state, um, and of course, sign the recovery, uh, vote recovery pledge. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of these tools. Essentially, this hub is broken up into three sections. One section is recovery issues engagement. This is where folks can go and they can learn a little bit more about um, civic participation and voting and getting involved in the process in general. And they can learn more about recovery as a issue um, at the polls. So let's take a look at some of these sites or some of these inner pages. So this is recovery issues education. This is going to explain a gamut of issues that are associated with recovery. Everything from access to healthcare, judicial uh, or criminal justice reform, mental health, LGBTQIA, uh, insurance discrimination, homelessness, you name it, we've, we've added it here. And if you think of anything else, that would be helpful, let us know. And we can continue to adapt this and make different uh, iterations to this hub. Under this section, we also have um, a spot for organized issue voting. This is where you can send people to get more information on the polling data that we've, that we've conducted. So we have some information here about what voters have been telling us. And you and your advocates in your state can easily tweet up these stats on Twitter, we also have a section about what our communities are telling us. So here you can go ahead and you can sift through all this data 
from this national survey that we've sent out and you can segment it too. So if you wanted to look at only a specific party affiliation or I only maybe want to look at Nevada, does that change things? You can sift through this data um, right here and take a look at how people, how the community has responded to these questions. And of course, you can always take the survey too and share this survey with your advocates. And this data updates in real time. So um, let's go ahead and look at Vote Recovery Town Halls this is a page where you're, we have compiled information and helpful guides for starting or organizing your own recovery town hall in your state. You can learn more about civic participation and getting involved. And what does civic participation look like and entail? Information on candidate engagement and candidate questionnaires. And then helpful strategies um, when you are planning your Get Up the Recovery Vote campaigns, helpful strategies to make sure that it goes off without a hitch. So um, some people, uh, uh, you know, Aaron and Anna Maria talked about yard signs, different templates. You can get an email template here. Right, so you could use that to email your friends, family, or your constituents. We also have some helpful social media graphics that you can download and you can share online. You can share directly from here. And then phone banking and door-to-door -door canvassing as well with uh, a phone script. So here's some helpful tools for you to get out the vote. The other section of the website is all about voting rights. So we have that broken up into voter restoration, reporting voter violations, and voter suppression and voter ID laws. So let's take a look at voter restoration. Here you'll find helpful information about voter restoration. You can look up your state and see um, if your state has, in fact, applied voter re restoration laws um, in your state. If you think you may be um, being harassed at the polls, or if you think that you maybe your, your voting rights may be suppressed, you can actually report violations. Um, so we've included a variety of resources, both English and uh, Spanish resources for people. And then more information about voter ID um, laws, and you can find uh, which states have these laws here on this site as well. Now, my favorite section of the web website is where we have all these amazing tools that we've baked in. So under our vote, people can go under our register to vote tab, and you can register to vote right here on the site. So we have this easy form. If you fill this out, um, if it's allowed, if if your state allows for online voter registration and if you haven't missed the deadline, this will register you to vote right here. Um, if you cannot register to vote, it will direct you into um, receiving the information via mail from your state election office. If you're unsure about voter re uh, registration deadlines in your state, we've put together this helpful table um, that is searchable. So if we take a look at Minnesota, we could bring up what the deadlines are for in person, by mail, and online, and then any additional information about election day registration. You can check your voter status. So if any of you had answered, I'm not sure if I'm registered to vote or not, you can use this helpful tool, put in your information, and once you put it in, it'll automatically just pop up with your name with either a green check or a red X and let you know if you're registered to vote in your state. If you're unsure about where you actually go on election day, where your polling place is, you can use um, this helpful tool and it will pull up your polling place right here on the site. We have more information about candidates and elected officials um, and how different levels of um, electeds actually can influence key issues. So here we have an example from When We All Vote about various levels of office that actually have a direct impact on the criminal justice system. So from our senators and representatives in Congress to our district attorneys, our state legislators, a sheriff, a mayor, all of these different levels of office 
have a direct impact when we're talking about some of these issues. And, you know, I don't know about anyone else on the call, but for me, I wasn't sure about what type of position some of these offices actually do, you know, or how they can influence these, these key issues in our state. So we put together this helpful resource um, about all these different levels of office and what these roles are. You know, what is the difference between a US representative and a state representative or assembly person? What do city council members do? What does a sheriff do? What do judges do? Some of these um, offices, some of these candidates that are running for office may be on your local ballots and that will differ state by state. So you can go here and you can learn more about these different levels of office. You can also submit um, an absentee ballot through our site as well. Oh, let me let it load. Absentee ballot um, or register for early voting um, using this tool as well. On election day, we put together a helpful guide um, for election day assistance. So here we have more information about, um, you know, just general, general information about election day from getting rides to the polls, to assisting people with disabilities, um, to finding your polling location. The election office directory will pull up your local directory at the regional level. So let's go ahead and take a look at what, how this works. So I'm gonna do Nevada. My region is in Clark County. And now it's gonna automatically load all these additional resources that are available to me to my, for my local elections office. And then we also have our vote recovery pledge. And this is an embedded action network action. So what we're asking people to do is not only to pledge to vote recovery, during these elections, but also pledge to empower recovery voters. All of us can play a piece in getting out the recovery vote and assisting people, whether it is in registration, understanding where their polling place is, or offering rights to the polls. Um, and so we all play a piece in this. So we can pledge to empower local recovery voters right here in our communities and direct them to this resource. So that's um, the, they're everything in a nutshell. I will let you guys know, for those of you who are familiar with Action Network, these tools are directly integrated with Action Network. So if you are in your local communities organizing constituents or going and registering new voters, when anybody uses these tools that asks for their information, so let's take a look at the reg register to vote tool. Not only will this register the, indiv the individual to vote, but this automatically will move them into your action network as a constituent. So then you can re-engage with them, you know, send them uh, emails or text alerts about, um, you know, upcoming deadlines or engage them in your next events, training or something else that you're planning in your community. And Aaron, that's pretty much everything. So if you want to open up for questions, we can, otherwise I'll just turn it back over to you. Uh, thank you, everyone. I know that we are a little over time, so thank you all for, for sticking in there. Um, one of the questions in the chat was, uh, should I share this online? <laughs> and yes, uh, share this uh, far and wide. I think that, um, you know, the easier, you know, the easier it is for people to understand why their voice makes a difference and why recovery uh, connects with civic engagement, you know, the more somebody feels a part of their recovery, the easier it is for them to uh, uh, involved in their community, the easier it is um, for them to maintain recovery. That was one of the things that I was thankful for early on in my recovery is finding this sort of, these, this sort of campaign sort of work and having that feeling that I was a, a part of something. Um, and I think that we can give that to people all over the country, recovery people and supporters. Um, all over the country. And so I hope this is the beginning of, you know, people for, for you all to really explore the issues that you care about, um, to talk to people about it, to mobilize people, to organize your communities. Um, I think that vote recovery 
um, is that conversation starter um, in relational organizing that we've been talking about um, throughout the year. Um, so I see a lot of good comments in the chat box. Um, everything that you need to know is going to be on that website. So it's recoveryvoices.com backslash vote. Um, and that's, uh, and so you get that out on, I, I did post it on, in social media, we'll post it to, um, the mobilized recovery site and the wrap Facebook as well, um, and get it out there for everybody. Or you can use our recoveryvoicesvote.org. It all goes to the same place. That's easier. Recoveryvoicesvote.org. Um, thank you all tonight. Um, if you have, if you want to take a little crash course on these trainings, I suggest going to the YouTube page and you just type in Recovery Advocacy Project and there's a huge playlist of every training we've had um, since last October. And so, um, and then Garrett usually puts a link to that YouTube page um, uh, in, in the uh, follow-up email, you'll get to this and you'll get to RSVP for our next training next month. So thank you everybody. Thank you to our candidates. Um, thank you, Sean, for walking us through the website. Thank you, Anna Maria, for being an awesome organizer um, and, and letting people know how to get out the recovery vote. Um, we'll see everybody next month. Thank you all. It's good to see your faces.